Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. And again, my name is Raggy Horner, and welcome to uh, typically, by the way, we do this chat every Tuesday, for those of you that want to participate. We do this chat every Tuesday, and it's a, it's a chat dedicated to chart patterns and to trading with auto chartists. And we're also going to, I'm going to give you a few resources here. If you have any questions, we have a blog at FX Street. I'm going to type in the URL. It's the Chartology blog. It's chartology.fxstreet.com. If you have any comments or questions, okay, please post them there. You can post them at the blog, okay? So let's talk about what are the four steps to trading chart patterns. Because what we're going to do is have some very specific strategies to understanding chart patterns and in their and their place within the overall trading methodology that we're going to talk about here today. And we're going to we're going to go way beyond just talking about the strategies, but understanding in in my opinion, I think any strategy that you want to use in the market, you have to understand where your strategy is best applied. In other words, I know a lot of people have a particular study or indicator or something that they like a lot, okay? But they have to know when it's applicable. And usually most traders, when they run into problems, it's because they don't know when to use a certain strategy and when to stop in a certain strategy. And I think that's probably as important as anything else that we determine to do. Because I'll give you a great example. We're, we're going to use the tools of chart patterns to, to accomplish our four-step trading. Okay, and look for opportunities in the market. The key here is consistency. All right. So I'm going to go through how I start the market. In fact, um, how many people are, are pretty advanced Forex traders? You've got maybe a year or more under your belt in Forex trading. How many people here in the room would consider themselves a little bit more experience, one year or more. Okay, that's great. Well, when you talk about when we talk about trading experience, and we get into understanding uh, where. Our, our skills and, and, and so forth lie. Remember, watching the market for about one year will allow you to see pretty much every kind of scenario that you can deal with. You'll have a number of rate decisions. You'll have a number of non-farm payrolls. You know, next this year is actually going to be interesting with the election. Okay, of course, every four years we have the election that again presents some different challenges in terms of of, ha of having experience all the different kinds of inputs the market has to deal with. Now, in my opinion, I'm a chartist. So what we're going to do is look back and say, okay, if I'm looking at the chart, I don't necessarily want to get bogged down in all the minutia of fundamental analysis. I'll give you a great example here. If I was looking at fundamentals, and let me just explain to you why we're going to be going chartist-wise and fundamental, and just so you understand where I'm coming from. This morning on the Canadian dollar, we had really a, a much below, you know, much much worse than expected um, foreign securities purchase. And if someone was looking just at the fundamentals on the surface, it would look like a very net big negative for the Canadian dollar. Yet it hardly moved to Canada at all. Okay. So what I'm here to say is, we don't disrespect, we don't ignore. The, the different hot zones of the market if you are a chartist or if you're using chart patterns. But within our four steps of trading, we're really assuming that price action will reflect what's going on in the larger picture. And that's one of the things you have to understand. There's only so much you're going to be able to absorb on any particular day. You're never going to know all the facts. That's just a fact. There's no way we're going to know all the different things that are happening in the market at any given time. So, which is why we use these four steps, because this way 
we're at least putting ourselves in the best possible scenario to consider the market cycle, the support and resistance, confirming the trades, all of the things that we can control visually by looking at a chart is what the four steps do cover. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into what these four steps are and how we can utilize chart patterns to help us make decisions quicker and better. All right. Now, how many people here use chart patterns? Have in the past or, or do now? Because if you've noticed, the thing with chart patterns is always interesting to me. And the program here that I'm using, by the way, is the Auto Chartist, which for those of you that are FX Premium members, you get the Auto Chartist FX version with your premium subscription here at FX Street. Okay, for those of you that want to try it out, because I always like to make sure if I'm using a particular tool that everyone gets to try it out. So if you want to, um, you can head on over and download a free trial. It's a 21 day free trial. And w along with that, you get the what we call the intro series videos. In other words, you actually get a, a little video educational series on chart patterns and how to set up the auto charts. Okay, so you get a little, little course and a 21-day free trial. So if you want to try the program that I'm using here today, I want to at least make sure you have access to that. All right, so let's start with the first step. Now, if, if, you, were a, if you were in my office here and you were sitting with me on any given day, and you decided that, you know what, I want to, I want to watch and see what what I'm doing, what Rodney's doing in her office to make, make decisions about trading. The first thing you'd see me do is head on over and check a few commodities. Now, I know there's now a futures uh, section over at FX Street. And one of the things I'm here to tell you, yes, we're here to talk about Forex, but my trading day isn't just about the Forex market. I look for opportunities across multiple markets, and they do actually help me make better Forex decisions and simultaneously, I'm able to find more and better opportunities because I'm not limiting myself just to Forex. Now, the first thing I'm going to check on any given day is dollar index futures. Because if I'm going to be looking at my four steps, I want to understand the markets that are influencing the Forex market. And there's a few of them. And here, and here they are if you want to write them down. On any given day, I don't care if it's a daily chart you have access to or an intraday chart. I'll just go to daily here because I know it's easy enough to get daily futures contracts um, on a chart from a number of places. So uh, you can definitely go ahead and utilize daily charts. But I'm going to look at the dollar index futures, which you see here in front of you right now. Why am I going to look at the dollar index futures? Because four of the seven pairs that I trade, and actually you can increase it up to maybe nine, but four of the seven pairs that I trade consistently have a correlation back to the dollar the euro US dollar, the US dollar Swiss franc, the British pound US dollar, and the US dollar Japanese yen. Okay, so understanding what's happening in the US dollar gives me insight into support, resistance, and trends that are occurring in those pairs. Another market I'm going to keep an eye on is the crude oil market. The crude oil market affects not only the US dollar, but the crude oil market affects the US dollar Canadian dollar, the dollar Canada. So it gives me a good insight into what's happening with the dollar Canada when I keep an eye on crude oil. And we know crude oil has been talked about a lot the last few months. Another market I'm going to keep an eye on is gold. And I'll pull up the mini gold, but I'll keep an eye on gold. If you want to look at full-size gold, that's fine too, but I'll keep an eye on gold. Now gold affects the U.S. dollar. Gold affects the U.S. dollar, uh, I'm sorry, the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar, and, as well as the uh, New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, those, those commodity currencies, okay? And then I'm also going to keep an eye on the Dow. Okay, now the Dow gives me in insight into what's happening in the U.S. economy, as well as lately the Dow's been tracking, you know, I'd say over the last six or eight months, been tracking really, really well with the dollar yen, the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. So I'm going to keep an eye on those markets. So even before I begin my Forex trading, 
I want to know what's going on in the market at large. And keep an eye on the U.S. dollar, crude oil, gold, and the Dow gives me a very broad look at what's happening in the U.S. economy. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to be just U.S.-centric by looking at these markets, but since most of the activity in the Forex market occurs in dollar-correlated pairs, again, the Euro-U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar-Swiss franc, the British pound U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, since most of the daily activity occurs in those four pairs, there is a very strong correlation back to the U.S. dollar. So that's why I'm taking a look at these markets. So that's the first thing I'm going to do every single morning. What's going on in these broader market indicators? Okay? All right, so once I've done that, I can begin looking at the different pairs. And as I begin to scan for my four, for my four steps, and let's go ahead and write these four. I'm going to write these four steps down together so we can at least uh, move forward together here. All right, so step one is always going to be know your market cycle. What does that mean? You know, the market cycle question is one that I see very few traders doing, and I think the reason for that is they don't know how. Okay? They don't know how, and they certainly don't know why they need to do that. So we're going to cover that. Know your market cycle. The second step is going to be your lines and levels. In other words, support and, uh, trend lines and support and resistance levels. The third step is going to be your trigger. In other words, what's your entry? The fourth step is going to be confirmation of that entry. And that's the four steps of trading right there. That's the four steps. Okay, that's ring today. Now, the tools that you decide to do, whatever tools you determine that you want to use to accomplish this, is completely up to you. Okay, it's completely up to you. I'm going to show you the tools that I use day in and day out, but if you have different tools or you favor different indicators or whatever it may be, feel free to apply them because the, the questions here are universal. These aren't specific to, to just my strategy. These really apply to getting an educated look at the market, analyzing it intelligently, consistently, day in and day out. And at some point, I don't care whether you're trading Elliott Waves, I don't care if you're trading Bollinger Bands, I don't care if you're trading Fibonacci, uh, chart patterns like I'm doing here, I don't care if you're day trading, I don't care if you're using a daily chart and going long term. These are universal questions. And unless you know these tools, you, somewhere along the line, there's, there might be an error made, a misstep, or you're going to overlook something, and that in turn is going to lead to a bad entry and potentially a bad trade. Okay? So let's start with the market cycle. Let's start with step one, and we're going to use the euro to do that. It doesn't matter what you want to do. You know, anytime you want to trade any market, you're going to have to start with whatever you, you like to trade. Now, here in the group, we have a lot of people here today. If there is a particular trade or a particular market you want to do here together, we'll analyze it here together in the room. So if you do want something analyzed here, you know, live analysis, okay? I like using live charts. I'm not a fan of PowerPoint, and I like using live charts. If you want a little live an analysis, go ahead and type in the pair and the time frame you're watching, okay? The pair and the time frame. Now, I'm going to, I, I naturally scan through things like the 15, 30, 180, 240 daily. But if you've got another time frame, I don't care if it's a 120 minute, I don't care if it's a 10 minute, I don't care if it's a weekly. Just let me know the, the pair, type in the pair name and the time frame, and we'll do a little live analysis here in the room. So in the meanwhile, let's do the first step. Let's do the step of understanding the market cycle. Okay, now I utilize a very specific tool. <clears throat> I call it the WAVE. And it's the 34 exponential moving average on the high, on the low, and on the close. Okay? And this is this is this tool, the wave, allows me to determine what the clock angle is. That's what I call clock angle. It's my way of determining what, what kind of cycle, what kind of market cycle we're dealing with right now. So you'll see these three pink lines going across my screen. Nothing proprietary here. 
It's just something I call the wave. And it's a 34 period exponential moving average, EMA, one on the high, one on the low, and one on the close. That's how you get the three lines. Okay? So actually, we get a, we get a um, question for the pound yen. Uh, buoyant, what time frame, please? And I'll be happy to take a look at it. Now, as I set up the wave on each one of these, these charts, a uh, question here from Eagle301. Eagle, I use the high and the low because nothing is, well, two reasons. One, the footprint, the visual footprint is a better footprint. It's, it's visually much more telling to me than simply just the close. Also, I know that the high and low range of any market can all sometimes be with, you know, if you think about support and resistance, does it always begin and end with the close of the candle or the close of the bar? No, a lot of times new highs, resistance, or support can be established by the wick or the higher low of that particular time frame's candle or bar. So by plotting the high and low of the moving averages as well, I can account and also reflect the fact that support and resistance and trend lines aren't just reflected by a close. They oftentimes are, are touch points that are created by highs and lows as well. And that's why we use all three lines and levels. Because the high and low has a lot of relevance back to many of the touch points we use for trend lines, for support and resistance, and in turn then for the chart patterns. That's why I kind of expand out how, my, how I plot my wave. And again, visually, it's much easier to read because it's a wider, uh, larger footprint. Okay, so the euro yen, or, I'm sorry, the pound yen request was for the one hour. Now, I know a lot of people like trading the pound yen because of the volatility. Um, it's not one that I trade a lot, but I think it's a perfectly good chart. I think it's one that should really be used only by advanced traders, not by not by everybody necessarily. Okay? But I think it's one that certainly has enough movement to get people's attention. So the first thing I'm going to do, step one, is that market cycle, right? We have the wave on here, and I'm going to determine what direction the market's going in. And that might sound really simplistic, right? What's the market cycle? I can see an uptrend or downtrend, but I've got to tell you something. I've never seen really anyone, I, you know, and I've built all the seminars, and I've seen all these things. I speak at a lot of these seminars and, and, and expos. Um, I've never seen in all my studies a tool that consistently was dedicated to one thing and one thing only, which is to tell people whether the market is moving up, down, or sideways. These, and these cycles have a name. There's, there's four cycles, not in any particular order. It's accumulation, distribution, mark up, and mark down. Accumulation is a sideways, a quiet sideways market. Okay, it's a quiet sideways market. Distribution is a more volatile, wider ranging sideways market. Mark up and mark down are quite simply uptrend and downtrend. Now, I've never seen a tool whose sole job is to tell you which one of these cycles we're in, which is why I went ahead and put together the wave so I could answer that question for myself because it never seemed to be addressed in any books that I used to read. I would simply get a chart and say, okay, see the downtrend. Well, I can see the downtrend on this 60-minute chart of the pound yen, but when did it begin? Okay, when did it begin, and how soon can I determine that? Well, that's what the wave allows me to do. I could have determined this downtrend as far as early back as the 10th of January, because on hindsight, of course, it's a downtrend. We can all tell that. But how do we tell when we shift from one of these cycles to another? And again, I don't care what type of analysis you use. This has to be part of your overall approach because if you don't know what kind of cycle the market is in, you're going to be entering the market with the wrong tool. And let me tell you, let me backtrack here for a moment. I don't know, every one of us came into this room with a different set of tools. I don't know what those are, you know, different ways of entering the market. Whatever books we read, whoever's mentored us or taught us, we have a, a certain set of strategies that we use. 
But let me ask you this. Do you know when to use those strategies correctly? Because that's the one thing that always seems to be missing. Now, if you learn how to trade from a trend follower, great. You are typically going to be entering the market within the context of a trend. If you learn how to trade from someone who likes breakouts and breakdowns, you're typically going to be learning or typically typically going to be using these, these tools when in the context of accumulation or distribution, the two sideways stages. So it's a really a two-fold question. One, which type of market cycle is my strategy best suited for? And two, how do I recognize that strategy so I know when to use it? And again, I don't care what strategies you're using. You don't even have to use the tools I'm using here. But you must answer those questions. Again, these are universal questions. So back to this pound yen. How would I start the analysis here? Well, the first thing I would do is look at the time frame, which is a 60-minute chart. And I ask myself, <clears throat> how, much, how much data do I need to look at if I'm looking at a 60-minute chart? In other words, if I'm looking at a 60-minute chart, do I need two months? Do I need one month? Do I need three days? You know. Too often I see the amount of data on a chart as this random thing. You know, people just put whatever they're visually comfortable looking at. Or if their chart's really big, they put in a lot of data. If their chart's really small, they put in very little data. I'm here to tell you that the amount of data, you know, the time, the amount of, of candles or how far back within the calendar you go to squeeze into your chart should not be a random thing because it is not a random thing. Every market or I should say every time frame has what's called a market memory. A market memory. So if I'm looking at a 60-minute chart, what's the market memory of a 60-minute chart? Typically, psychologically speaking, nobody's going to care what happened on a 60-minute chart a month ago. It just isn't relevant. It's beyond the memory. It's beyond what's, what's uh, relevant to making decisions on a 60-minute chart. The market memory for a 60-minute chart is about two weeks. Two weeks are about 10 trading days. So when you look at a 60-minute chart, you want to look at about two weeks of trading. The two weeks will give you a look at the current trend. The two weeks will give you the relevant touch points for your lines and levels. The two weeks will also give you a good amount of data for what we call the last major move if you're a Fibonacci trader. You'll be able to see relevant highs and lows. So two weeks on a 60-minute chart. Now, what if we came and said, well, Rogi, I want to look at a daily chart of the pound yen. What's the mark memory there? Well, obviously, two weeks on a daily chart is absolutely meaningless. That's not enough data. Psychologically speaking, we're going to miss out on all sorts of stuff. The market memory on a, on a daily chart should be one year. One year is what you need to look at. Understand where the 52-week high and low is. Understand what the current trend is. Understand the touch points that you'll need. You're going to need 52 weeks of data. You're going to need one year on a daily chart. So let's go back into that 60-minute chart and that two-week memory. Now, do you need to be right on the button? No, no, you don't have to be really exact. But I want you to understand how far back you have to look in order to gauge what this market is doing properly. You don't want too much. So don't say, hey, well, Rogi, if two weeks is good, maybe three weeks is better. No, no, no. Stick within those within that parameter. So if I'm looking at this chart here, this chart of the pound yen, and I know I need to look at it within that, 60, that, that two weeks, the 60-minute chart, now you notice, depending upon how much data I put in or take out of the, of, of this, the view screen, it's going to adjust the way these three lines look. And that's another problem. When traders look at very little data, one, they can't tell what the relevant touch points and trend is, and two, they actually change the way the wave looks. And that's important here. Okay, there's a little bit of subjective nature to this. If I look at currently at what's happening with this chart of the wave, I'm going to see right off the bat that the three lines of my wave are pointing up very slightly. Now, again, I, t I mentioned these things called clock angles. Well, what I do is I literally imagine a clock face on the screen, and I basically ask myself, you know, what time is it? Okay, what time is it? So 
So you see what I'm doing here? I'm literally imagining a clock face on the screen. And this gives me a way to judge the angle of the market. And depending upon the angle of the market, the clock angle of the market, I'll make a decision as to whether it's in an uptrend, downtrend, or no trend. Now that might seem obvious, but when a trend is just starting, sometimes it's tougher than you think. Again, there hasn't been a tool that I've ever seen dedicated to our just ask, being able to ask and answer. Is the trend a strong uptrend, a weak uptrend? How long has it been an uptrend? Is it a sideways market? Is it transitioning, transitioning from a trend to a sideways market? All these things, that's what I'm going to be able to determine here. So I would say this is a very weak uptrend. Very weak uptrend. It's not quite a sideways market, but it's a very weak uptrend. Okay? A couple things. Prices are situated right now above my wave, which is a bullish thing. Okay? All right? Which is a bullish thing. And two, I'm going to determine whether I see this, again, on the 60-minute chart, whether I think this might be a neutral market or an uptrend. In my mind, this is a very, very weak uptrend. Now, why do I say weak? Someone might be saying, well, Raggy, take a look at how far it's moved. You know, look at how much it's bounced from 208 to 212. How can you call it a weak uptrend? Well, in the context of the 60-minute chart, it is, right? If I look at the daily chart, and this is, where, this is where time frames really matter. I think people think just because a market is moving up on one time frame that everything is, is very, very strong, okay? It really depends upon the... Now, take a look at the daily chart. Yeah, it bounced, right? There's no doubt about that. But what's the daily chart in? This is a firm, firm downtrend. This is hardly even registering as a bounce on the daily chart. <clears throat> you see that? On the daily chart, you'd hardly even notice that intraday, this pound yen is in an uptrend. Hardly even notice. Okay? All right, let's see here if I have any other questions. Um, Boyke asks, joking. I have no idea what that means, Boyke. Am I joking? I hope not. Okay, so back to the 60-minute chart. As I take a look at what I determined to be <clears throat> on the 60-minute chart, on the 60-minute chart, what I determined to be basically a fresh or weak uptrend right now, what if I compare this to a 15? Take a look at a 15-minute chart. Well, you can hear, you can see much better the uptrend here, can't you? It's reflected a whole lot differently than it was in the 30, isn't it? Or the 60. It's a 30-minute chart right here. See how much different it looks 30 compared to the 60? It looks like it's much more firm. And that's why I say you have to look across the different time frames. Did I type in 9 instead of 6 or something, Boyke? If I did, again, 12, 12 3, and 6 o'clock, the clock phase. So I would say this, this right now is probably moving upwards between 2 and 3 o'clock. I'd say right now, if I was making a, a determination as to what the clock angle was here, there's 12, there's 3, there's 6. I'm looking at this basically moving up between 2 and 3 o'clock. All right. So if I had this moving up basically between 2 and 3, I'm going to basically deem this as a relatively weak uptrend. Okay, you see that? That's basically the, the angle that the market's moving at. All right, so now that I know that the market's moving up in a weak angle, I'm going to tell you, just this alone will tell me that the 60-minute chart of the pound yen is not one that I want to necessarily trade. Now let's go through the different time frames. If I want to look at the 15-minute chart, um, good question, Eagle. Eagle 301 asks, what about the um, market memory? All right, let's go through the market market memories here. Let me just type, it, type those in. All right, so if you want to look at it, I'm going to type in the, the time frames I look at, 15, 30, 
60, 180, 240, and daily. Now, the 15 is kind of aggressive. I don't look at it that often. But you're basically talking about three to five days. A 60, you're basically looking at one to two weeks. Um, three, three means the minimum, five is the max. And the 30 minute, again, one is the minimum, two is the max. Okay? On a 60 minute, it's two weeks. On the 180, it's one month. On the 240, it is also one month. And finally, on the daily, one year. Those are look backs for the different time frames that I that I trade. The market memory or the or the look back. So if I refer to look back, it's the same thing. How far am I looking back to judge? You know what the market's up to. Market memory look back, same thing. Okay. <clears throat> All right, everyone got that? Okay, so now that we know what we're looking at and why, if I, again, going back to that 60-minute that chart, because of the trend it's currently in, it really isn't one that I think is going to be a, a good trend to trade right now. Okay, so I'm going to have to scan through the time frames that I watch to ask myself which might be best suited to trade what on the short term intraday chart looks to be a, a bounce on the intermediate intraday charts or your longer term your 180 240 your three and four hour chart what looks to be now consolidation now take a look at this wave here we'll squeeze in our market memory to, to one month which you see here and what we have looks like more of a sideways wave you see how the three lines of the wave are pointed a little bit more sideways more at 3 o'clock? Well, when I have a wave that looks like that, now I'm t it's a completely different set of strategies. So let's talk about what the strategies are for trending versus non-trending markets, and we'll introduce here the, the auto charter. Now, again, if you have a trending strategy and a non-trending strategy, great. You know, basically we're talking about trend following versus breakout breakdown trading. Okay, that's in a nutshell what we're talking about here. Now, setting those up, you could use a myriad of tools. I like using tried and true tools that have been around forever, and that's what brings me to chart patterns. The other reason I like using the chart patterns is, you know, we're talking about five or six time frames across seven to nine different pairs. That's 63 different charts that I'm scanning throughout my trading day, which basically lasts about, oh, 6, 7 a.m. to about noon each day. So I trade about four to six hours a day, really no more or less. So why do I like auto charters? Well, throughout the day, there's only so much I can humanly keep an eye on. I've got a number of monitors, yes, but still, I don't care if I have 50 monitors. I still visually have to be able to track each and every one of these. So what I do is I let software help me out, not make decisions for me, but at least help me out, help me scan for opportunities that I will then go and confirm with the four steps. I'll confirm with the market cycles and so forth. Okay? So auto chartist basically is very quietly in the background looking for opportunities for me. And if you want to try auto chartist out, like I said, I, I put the link up there. You can go ahead and get the 21 day free trial in a, in a bunch of video um, that, I, that I've actually done for auto chartist to help you get more out of chart patterns. Because I feel a lot of people, um, one, don't use chart patterns because they don't know how to do a lot of what we're talking about here this morning. They don't know how to do it or they don't do it correctly. You know, they don't have a plan. So um, let's talk about the auto charters here and the opportunities that are coming up. Now, it, what, good enough, we have a 15-minute pound yen alert that came up on the 1030 alert. Now, auto charters is going to scan across the 15, 30, 60, 240, and daily time frames. That's the time frames auto charters is going to scan. And every 15 minutes, it's going to go calculate everything all over again. Now, if you are a Forex trader, like I said, you get the FX version of Auto Chartist with your premium subscription. If you're like me and you like to trade stocks, 
and markets like the S&P 500, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, AutoChartist has versions for um, stocks and indices as well, okay? And I like to trade across multiple markets, so that's a good, that's a good combination for me. Now, this is a continuation rectangle that's occurred in the 15-minute chart of AutoChartist. Now, if I'm going to trade a rectangle or trade any kind of sideways pattern like a rectangle or a triangle, okay, I need to know that these patterns are occurring in the right market cycle. So let's go through some market cycle analysis here. And so we know now which chart patterns we look at for particular, for particular setups. All right, so the first thing I want to do then is go through the patterns that AutoChartist scans for. And we'll, and we'll talk about whether they're trending or non-trending patterns. Now, the first three you should see on your screen, the ascending triangle, descending triangle, and the triangle, any kind of triangle is a consolidation or congestion pattern <clears throat> that should be ideally occurring in that distribution or accumulation cycle. In other words, that sideways market cycle. The one where the wave is basically pointing at, say, 3 o'clock or 2 to 4 o'clock. In other words, a sideways wave. Channel up and channel down, well, just like the name implies, it's an up or down pattern. Well, those patterns should be ideally occurring within a trend. So uptrends and downtrends. Same with the falling, rising wedge. Again, the name says it all. It's rising or falling. Well, I can't have a falling market in a sideways market cycle. I need that uptrend. I need that downtrend. Rectangles are similar to triangles. Rectangles should occur in that sideways market cycle, whether that be 2 to 4 or whether that be 3 o'clock. All right? Head and shoulders are kind of funny. Head and shoulders will typically occur in a sideways market, but every now and then, depending upon the neckline, you could get it occurring in more of a trending market. But remember, the head and shoulders really is a neckline, which is nothing more than a trend line or a support or resistance line. Okay? Triple tops and triple bottoms ideally should be happening in sideways markets. Again, 3 o'clock or 2 to 4. Um, flags don't happen that often, but those will occur usually in a 2 to 4 o'clock market. Okay? Not quite strongly trending, but not quite sideways. Pennants are just big triangles, big symmetrical triangles. And pennants should also be occurring in a 3 o'clock market cycle. Finally, we come to double tops and double bottoms. Double tops and double bottoms should be occurring in a sideways market cycle. Again, three or two to four. So you'll see most of these patterns are, are really sideways market patterns except for your channel up, channel down, and rising and falling wedges. Those are your trending patterns, and the rest of them really fall more under the category of your sideways accumulation and distribution patterns. Is everyone with me so far? Okay, so let's go back to that. Let's go back to that uh, chart of the 180 pound. Now, if I take a look at that 180 pound, the wave is going sideways. So I'm gonna. I would like to see what pattern would I like to see here? I want 240s probably going sideways as well. What would I like to see here? I would like to see a triangle. I would like to see a rectangle. Double top, double bottom. Any of those sideways alerts on my auto charts would help me set up the pound yen. Now, let's take a look at some of the alerts we've got for the pound yen. I, I've actually got a 15-minute rectangle that we looked at before. Okay, so let's take a look at that live 15-minute chart. Now, remember, AutoChartist is a scanning and alert program. It's going to look for opportunities. It's going to let you know of these opportunities, but you still need to have a live charting feed. AutoChartist is not a black box. It's not here to tell you when to get in, when to get out. It's here to present opportunities to you from a number of, again, my auto chartist scans literally a thousand stocks uh, across different time frames. It scans the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ across the 1530, 60, 240, and daily time frames. And it's scanning all my Forex pairs simultaneously. So you can see it's taking a lot of the workload off my plate and allowing me to, to work on basically um, setting up and confirming trades. So it saves me a lot of time so that my entries are timely, that I'm getting to these markets 
for an entry on time, with enough time, really. So if I take a look at the, the chart of the 15-minute pound-yen, and I take a look at the current line of the wave. Now, if you can't tell what the wave is doing, here's a really easy way to do it. Go, go grab the, the segment or line drawing tool out of your, your, your charting package. Every decent charting package has one, and just take the middle line of the wave. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm extending out. Oops. I'm extending out the current direction of the middle line of the wave. You see that? Now, if you do that, <clears throat> you'll see whatever direction this is pointing in. Again, tell me what time it is, right? To me, that's not quite 3 o'clock, but it's not quite 2. So that's probably going to be a decent 2 to 4 o'clock wave. Now, in a 2 to 4 o'clock wave, when I get a wide rectangle, like what I've got right now, what I'll do is call the inside the range trade. And again, if you, if you go grab that demo, that 21-day trial of Auto Chartist, it's free. Um, you'll get video on, on what I mean by inside the range. Basically, it is where you play shorts off resistance and bounces off support. Again, shorts off resistance and bounces off support. Okay? And I'll give you a bunch more resources before we uh, break here, or before we, you know, call it a day. Um, in about 50 minutes here, I'll give you some more resources um, to, uh, to get some more supplemental video and things like that. Okay, so... As you take a look at this current pattern, again, if I want to go ahead and draw the same lines and levels in, I certainly could. I could go ahead and, and go to my live chart and, and take my drawing tools again and, and draw the uh, pattern that I see on my auto chartist. Okay. It's on a perfectly flat rectangle, but that's the pattern basically auto chart has identified for us. <clears throat> what I can do is I can play a short off resistance, which is the red line here, which you'll see in a moment, and a buy off the green line. And that's what I do with patterns when they occur, congestion or consolidation patterns, when they occur in a 2 to 4 o'clock market cycle. Okay. Uh, Michael asked, uh, is this e-signal that I'm using? Yes, this is the uh, e-signal. That is, yes. Okay, so you can see here I'm basically getting that kind of rectangular channeling effect, and I'm going to play inside the range here because what I'm getting is a market that's not trending strongly, but it's not flat there. So there's enough volatility, there's enough volatility where it makes sense that I can play this range. Does everyone follow? All I'm looking to do is play this range. Okay, that's what inside the range means. I'm looking to play the range within this rectangle pattern. And that entire trade basically triggered from the 50-minute rectangle alert that I got from Auto Chart. So I'm looking to play this range here. All right, what about this other alert down here? I have another alert, which is a pound yen, and I believe it was a... Ascending triangle. Okay, let me talk about what happens here. When you get an alert that happened in the past, and this alert actually occurred at 10 a.m., okay? This alert occurred almost 45 minutes ago. This alert at 10 a.m. was valid, this ascending triangle. But as auto charters continue to monitor this pattern, and as prices begin to continue on trading up and down and whatnot, auto charters said, hey, there's enough that's occurred within this pattern where we don't feel it's valid any longer, and they'll make sure by giving you this alert here, by telling you, hey, don't trade this pattern anymore, it's no good. Enough has changed that we think there are better patterns now. And then that's when you'll see auto chartists give us alerts like, uh, here's, another, here's another one. Take a look at the first one we got at 10. I got another ascending channel alert at 10.30. See that? So auto chartists alert, updated its ten, original 10 a.m. alert saying, okay, that one's no good, enough has changed, and gave us a fresh alert at 10.30. And here's the ascending triangle. Now, 
Whether I'm playing the ascending triangle or whether I'm playing the rectangle, they have one thing in common. Autochartus is telling me that on both these time frames, let's go over to the 30-minute chart, it believes we're dealing with a range-bound market. Now, the 30-minute chart isn't that much different than the um, 15, but the uptrend is a little bit steeper, isn't it? It doesn't look that much different, but the uptrend is a little bit steeper. And I think the, up, the trend on the 30-minute could qualify as a 12 to 2. Well, if it's a 12 to 2, we're no longer talking about a range-bound pattern any longer, are we? We're talking about possibly now looking at a market that might be within the context of a fresh trend. Remember I said, you know, someone might say, well, Raggy, this thing bounced from 207 to 212. How can that not be an uptrend? Well, it is depending upon which time frame you're looking at. And on the 30-minute, it looks a little bit more like a 12 to 2, not because of what prices have done, but because what I can see is being reflected by the wave. It's very sideways right now. But according to the 30-minute, it's got a little bit more bullishness than it does neutrality. Okay, you see there? Now, what other alerts do we have? Are there any more that we have for the pound-yen? Nope, just those two that we looked at, the rectangle and the uh, ascending triangle. Now, the triangle should be occurring in a sideways market. We talked about that. But we talked also now that this 30-minute chart is taking on more of a 12 to 2 o'clock wait, which means we're going to set up instead the 15-minute chart because it has what we call a good pairing. A good pairing basically means, you know, when you hear, if you're going to ever going to join me for the uh, Tuesday sessions we do, a good pairing is basically when the pattern is occurring within the right market cycle. Okay, when the pattern's occurring within the good mar right market cycle, because I may have a triangle pattern, a rectangle pattern that looks great, you know, falling wedge, whatever it may be. I may have a pattern that looks great on my on my auto chartist, but it's not it's not, it's not enough to see a chart like this dollar yen on a 15 minute chart with a channel down. That's a good that's a good alert. I didn't say it's a trade, right? It's a good alert, but now it's my job to go back to the live charting. Take a look at that 15-minute chart and say, okay, is that pattern occurring in the right market cycle? In this case, with a 15-minute chart of the dollar-yen, this is not. This, is a de this should be a trending alert. This should be a downtrending market, but that's not what I'm getting. Now, auto chart is just going to look for the support and the resistance and the trend lines, draw the pattern, and let me know what that was, and alert me to it. But it's my job to now go back into the live charting and ask myself, is this a good pattern. It is a pattern that is tradable. Okay? And currently with the 15 minute chart moving sideways, that's no good to me. Okay? What about this channel down on the 60 minute dollar yen? Does the 60 minute give me a better pairing? Nope. The, the 60 minute dollar yen is also more sideways than it is trending. So these trending patterns, while they look great, are not a good pairing between market cycle and pattern. And this is where a lot of people get frustrated or, or trade patterns incorrectly. You must pair the market cycle with the pattern. Okay? Having the pattern occur is not enough. You've got to confirm that. All right? You've got to confirm that with the wave. All right, we're coming in on the last, uh, well, about five to seven minutes of our time here together. And again, I, I want to make sure I get some resources out to you. Again, don't forget we've got the Chartology blog where I talk about this and a whole lot more at chartology.fxstreet.com. For your free trial of AutoChartist, you can check out autochartist.com. Right. I've got a lot of video over at my website, ragi.com, about uh, order entry and chart patterns. You can check that out there at ragi.com. Again, these are all free resources, gang. Okay? And if you have any questions about chart pattern trading or chart patterns in general or the auto chartist, you can contact the good folks over there. There's the email. Okay?
All right, so uh, do I have any questions, Joe? Take a quick Q&A before we uh, wrap up here. Do I have any questions here? Okay, so let's see. Uh, I've got a question. Can I go over my use of the MACD and the CCI? Uh, the MACD and the CCI are confirmation tool, uh, Mabel. The confirmation tools that I utilize to confirm different patterns. And we go over those on, on Tuesday when we scan the live markets. And, and Michael asked, what do I cover on Tuesdays? Well, the session on Tuesdays, by the way, just so you know, the um, chart pattern trading webinars on Tuesday are at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. They are free to join here at Auto Chartist, or here at uh, FX Street. And um, what we cover is the live market scanning it with chart patterns. And I, and I do ex basically exactly what we did here today, only I go a little bit more into, into live analysis. OK, a little bit more into live analysis. So uh, thank you. Um, I'll put in the uh, you know, Trading with Auto Chartist webinars each Tuesday at basically 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1600 GMT. And we do a lot of live analysis there um, each Tuesday. So uh, the CCI and the MACD are confirmation tools, Mabel. Depending upon what market cycle I'm in, I'll utilize those to confirm the breakouts of the trades. And as far as, again, Tuesday sessions, it's a lot of live analysis live charts, and we talk about trade setups and what's happening uh, that day, that week. That's what we do there. OK. Any other questions? All right, then. Well, again, feel free to take advantage of the resources that I've uh, listed up there. And I appreciate your time this afternoon. I hope you enjoy this day. It's going to be chock full of a lot of great speakers. Um, you have, I don't know who the next, I don't know who the next um, speaker is, but I'm going to go ahead and make way so they can get, get all uh, set up. I think, I think Steve Primo is next, right? Anyways, you get a lot of great speakers coming up. I will hopefully see a lot of you on Tuesday for the free chart pattern trading session. Um, enjoy Steve. Great speaker. And you guys all have a great day, okay? I'll see you next week, okay? Take care.